Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today is part two of what I talked about as learning disabilities, and I went through all the different learning disabilities that my son had. So today I'm going to talk to you, as I mentioned, what was the one thing that we were doing with Brandon that those other mothers that I knew with also learning dis uh, disabled children, that they were not doing, and what was the one thing that we did with Brandon that really made a huge impact. Now first of all, I want to make uh, it very clear that all those programs that we had him in, I thought were excellent. I thought they all had their place. I thought they all dealt with a certain aspect of uh, what he was experiencing in terms of his learning disabilities. But the catalyst that brought it all together was music. As I mentioned before, one out of every four students that enter school now um, has some kind of a learning disability. That's 25% of the school population. That's pretty big. And one out of seven kids get involved in drugs. So after we had gone through all of the testing with Brandon, I talked to one of my friends um, who was a psychiatrist and another one of my friends who was a child psychologist, and I said, look, here's everything that's come back. It's pretty grim. What would be the number one thing you would give me as a piece of advice? They both told me the same thing. Find something that he's good at and that he's interested in and capitalize on that and help him to develop it. The reason being, they said, is kids are in school for at least, what, six, seven hours a day, and they have to feel some kind of success. Then they went on to tell me some of the statistics of people in prison and how many of them actually have learning disabilities. They said you don't want them to get involved in drugs and all of the other things that they can get involved with if they have a low self-esteem. All right, so why music? Why do we get him involved in music? Yes, because I was very interested, I was very concerned about those negative statistics. I didn't want that to happen with Brandon. Now, people have asked me too, when I go into this, and I'll tell you all the different things that we did with music, they've said, why did you want to change Brandon into something that he, um, you know, maybe he would have done something differently and he would have been fine without doing all these programs? Well, I don't believe that, okay? I believe that you help your child, you support your child, you give as much to your child as you can to help them with a learning disability. You don't just sit back and say, oh, well, you know, this is called sink or swim, honey. You know, that doesn't happen. That's why you're a parent. You're there to help. Now, the thing, the two things that I wanted for my kids is, number one, I wanted them to think, and even more so because I knew that that was tied to their intellect, and the other thing is I wanted them to be emotionally stable. I didn't want them to grow up and then do some heinous crime because they weren't emotionally stable. But I wanted my kids to think. And so basically when all of those um, people came back with all of the things that were wrong with him, they said he would have an extraordinarily difficult time learning. Well, I love learning. That was something that I wanted to pass to my kids. I wanted them to have a love for learning. So that was probably the impetus of me getting him involved in this and sitting with him painstakingly and helping him to learn a musical instrument. So let's go back to the music. As I've told you before, music exercises the left, the right, the front, the back, the top, the bottom portions of the brain. It particularly targets the motor, the visual, and the auditory cortexes of the brain. Those are all areas of the brain that Brandon was having problems with, and those are usually areas that other kids with learning disabilities are having problems with. So the answer, the biggest key of something extraordinarily important that you can do is to get them involved with music. Not only listening to music when they're, they're studying, studying and so forth, but playing a musical instrument. All right, so by the age of three, um, Brandon, I got him into a little group music program. It didn't have any particular name to it. It wasn't the Yamaha program or any of those. But he was playing on a keyboard, and he was learning some very, very simple notation. But this is how he played. It was flat-fingered, and he couldn't, it was impossible for him to look at the music and to read the music and to do the keyboard. It was absolutely impossible. The first thing I did was I wanted to work on the motor area, so we did this little exercise on the kitchen table. Each day we were lifting up each finger and counting one, two, three, 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 one, two, three with the finger slightly curved. Okay, so that was the motor part. All right, so I worked with him, um, you know, at the piano. And then I was told, well, why are you getting, in, getting him involved in piano? He has got spatial difficulties. He had difficulty with math. He had difficulty with reading comprehension. He wasn't seeing pictures in his mind. There was all that huge gamut of the visual spatial that was also lacking. 
And then he says, when, you're, when you, you teach a child piano, they're looking at all those white and black keys, they're looking at the music, all those notes, those black notes, those clear notes that are in the lines and the spaces, it's way too much. And I says, well, wait a minute, but that, doesn't that help with the visual spatial? And they said, yes, but you know, his is so bad. And I thought, I thought to myself, well, what it stands to reason and common sense would tell you, if these are his issues, then of course I want to get him involved in playing the piano. So what I did is I took him around. He was interviewed by a number of piano teachers. They wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. They said, he is never going to be able to do this. So I says, never say never. And uh, the other thing is, too, that let me just deviate here for a second. When you, you find out if your child has a bunch of learning problems for crying out loud, don't go home and tell them, well, you're not going to be able to do this and this and this and this. And I have stood in front of parents with their child standing there as they go in and basically say how dumb their kid is. As far as I'm concerned, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. That's from Goethe, the Russian philosopher, or not Russian, excuse me, the German philosopher, who said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And when I went back, after listening to all of these psychologists and everybody else tell me his learning problems, Brandon was smart enough to ask me at the age of five and a half, what is wrong with me? And I said, there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, they've told me that you're a very bright boy and you will graduate from college. Obviously that wasn't, but sometimes as a parent you tell a few little white lies to protect your child. So getting back to the music thing, so what I decided to do is I was going to teach him piano. I devised a way that I color coded the keyboard one octave up and one octave down. Then I took a colored pencil and I colored his music. Then what I did is I pointed to the music and I pointed to the key and then he started to learn how to play. And those exercises that we were doing instead of flat fingered, he was then starting to uh, curve his hands a little bit more to help him so it was able to play. Now, you don't have to do this anymore because there's an amazing program. Anybody can play piano. Carla Crossett, who is a uh, incredible musician, has developed this program. It uses exactly the same type of thing, coloring the keyboards and coloring the child's fingers. I wish I would have thought of that because that would have helped in a lot of areas. It was a painstaking process with Brandon because I was sitting with him on the piano bench every single day. And we were doing this for a half an hour to 45 minutes. Now, little by little by little, he got to the point where the spatial stuff I could tell was improving. And then eventually I got him in with a piano teacher. But I still continued sitting with him at the piano every day. The other thing that I had him do was um, I played music for all of my kids at night. I've already talked about different kinds of CDs that you can get. The Classical Kids series is a really good one. So he was listening to music at night. The other thing was I needed more brain organization from him because in the morning, you know, I usually told my kids, you got to do this, 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 and this and be down at the breakfast table at such and such a time. Well, for me to give him, Brandon three things to do was way too much. So what we did is our house was... Um, piped for all of this music and I'd turn it on and we would march. Okay, so that marching, that motoring, that motor development and also listening to the music at the same time as he marched around the house, marched into the bathroom, did that, marched into his bedroom, made his bed, blah, 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 marched down to, you know, breakfast. It helped to organize his brain. When he got home from school at night, I also did the mar marching routine again. And he had time to move and to play and, and to get a snack and change his clothes and all of that. When I gather the kids around to do their homework, that's when I play classical music. You can go on my blog, you can download that list of all the different pieces of classical music, and with that, it goes into exactly how to do it. It's background music, but it will change the electromagnetic frequency of the brain so that they're able to absorb, retain, and retrieve information better. Not only your regular kids that don't have learning problems, but particularly a child with learning issues. That also helped him. Now, let's fast forward. I still continued doing everything, and there was another music program. It was the Tomatis program. Uh, Dr. Minson in Col uh, Colorado also has an, uh, a similar program, although he uses music and movement with his. Brandon, this Tomatis program is they had headphones on his ears, and he was listening to filtered classical music. Now, don't ask me why, but there was something incredibly powerful about that that he was, that took him another leap forward in his learning. Okay, so music is highly important for the learning disabled, it's important for every child, but it's particularly important for the learning disabled child. 
I have a nephew who had severe attention deficit uh, disorder, and he was hyperactive, and he had OCD. His mother got him into playing percussion instruments, okay? And he did extremely well. Graduated from college, has done extremely well in life. And I could give you a bunch of other stories about a bunch of other kids who, smart parents that got them involved in music and how it changed their lives. So what happened to Brandon? Brandon did graduate from high school. Brandon went on to a four-year university, major university, graduated in film and philosophy with straight A's. First of all, let me tell you about philosophy. It's one of the most difficult majors on any university campus across the United States, probably across the world. In his senior year, one of his philosophy professors said to him, Brandon, with your mind, you really belong at a Harvard or a Princeton. He said, you're that smart. And you know what? He's a thinker. You know, he is able to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate inf uh, information. But more importantly, he has an incredibly kind, sweet heart. Um, his heart opens up to other people who struggle or who suffer in any way. Let me tell you one thing to end with, and, and this is a bonus fact. Parents, you can't drop your kids off at the curb of school and expect the schools to do miracles with your kids. They have too many kids and too many problems. You, the parent, you are the one that has to be totally and completely responsible. Now, there are good things about the schools. There are things that they can help your child with, but you know what? They have so many issues that they can, and most administrators do not understand how kids learn. The two biggest ways that they learn is through music and movement. And what are the two things the schools knock out because the administrators and the higher up people do not understand about learning and kids? They knock out music programs and they knock out PE, the two things that will actually help a child to be able to learn more. You can be an advocate in your school. Now, back during the Bush administration, the Clinton administrations, there were actual laws that were passed in the schools had to have music programs. However, they didn't say what kind of a music program. So most schools have a music program, one teacher for 1,000 students. That's not a music program. But you as a parent can get involved and you can bring in different. I've helped different groups of mothers, PTA and everything to, to form different music programs that the PTA can come in there and do once a month or once every two weeks with the kids that will help to um, enhance their music abilities and enhance their musical knowledge. If you want to read more about these programs, I have on my uh, website, I did a blog about different music programs, the Kodai music program, the, the Del Cross, the ORF, the uh, Let's Play Music, um, and also that I refer to today, Anybody Can Play Piano, an excellent program that you want to look into. If you have any questions or any comments, anything about your children and how music has affected them, if they are learning disabled, please share in the comments section below. Also, you can uh, click on the um, icon and you can subscribe to my channel. A little bell will come up and you can uh, get notifications of every time I post a new video. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.